Father, we thank you for bringing us together here again today. I present your people to the throne of your grace to bless every one of them as they are listening to your word this morning in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we need you at this time. We need you. We want to be like Jesus. Lord, come into your fullness, come into your sweetness. As we are longing, oh Lord, before you, are before you we pray this morning that we find you in Jesus' name. Father, we pray we find you in Jesus' name. Renew us. Renew us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us, O oh Lord, that we run this race to the end in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Today we are looking to a very important subject, signs of spiritual growth. Spiritual growth in our life. As a Christian, as a believer, when you are born again, even you are so excited, hard working for the Lord. You are so, you can go to evangelism when it is raining or not raining. You are very hot for the Lord. Because it goes down the way. Are you still hot for the Lord? How's your spiritual life today? From year to year, month to month, weeks to weeks. How are you growing? That's what we're looking today. The science of spiritual growth. Before we read, let us open John 1. John 1, verse 40. I want us to catch up this because I was I wake up at midnight. This is coming to me to write it down, to share with you. John 1, 40. One of them, one of the two which had John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Praise the Lord. He first found his own his brother Simon and said unto him, We are finding Messiah, which has been interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas. Now, look at what the Lord told me this morning. Where I'm heading, 46. We will start from... 44. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael. Look at the point right here. And said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophet did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Look at it, this man's response. This man responded to what he responded to. This man, listen, he said, and Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Remember, this man was not, he did not find him in the Biapalo. He did not find him in where there is, where they committing sin. That's why he called him. We have found him there. Now, the first time he found Peter, there was no negative comment from the mouth of Peter. The Lord chose him. But when you find this Nathanael, is there any good thing that come out? Sometimes we can't grow because of our mouth. If you look at this man, this might be the end where you can't find, you will not find his name again. Anything about him again. Is there anything? What is this Bible are coming to tell us this morning? What is your thought in heart? You only know who to believe when they come to preach. You will listen, you will not listen. As a believer, how can you grow? If the Jesus is here this morning and preaching, he will write notes. If any pastor, that or anybody, like our resident pastor, they're writing notes. But some people will say, who is this babbler? What is he going to talk? Immediately you have lost it. You cannot be blessed in the ministry of such Amen. Praise the Lord. Spiritual growth. There must be a sincere desire. If you want to grow spiritually, 
you must have the desire to grow. There must be a sincere desire in the heart of every child of God to grow. And to discover the secret that will enable him to live the realm of spiritual defeat and come to the grounds of spiritual victory. If you don't grow, if you don't grow in life, how can you defeat the enemy? Impossible. The normal and the natural desire of a rich child of God who has the life of God in him, the assurance of forgiveness of sin, remember you must be born again. Genuinely born again before you desire to grow. Because if you are not born again, you cannot grow. Because you don't even know what is growth mean. And the evidence of new birth is to grow spiritually. Keep growing. Don't stop. We need to grow. Don't stop. Spiritual growth does not, however, come to the careless or careless Christians. A backslider in heart has no desire to grow. I'm born again 15 years ago. I'm born again 30 years ago. Now, check your life. Are you still? Is there any new change in your life? What can you show for since we are born again? Progress and growth are desirable in all fields of life. We always feel concerned whenever there is no growth. When a child does not grow, parents always feel sad and sorrowful about a child. About a child. They feel it. Because this child is not growing. In our natural life, if we're not doing well in life, we feel so sorrow that we have not been doing good. We have not met up exactly what we want to be. But the spiritual growth of each of us is the desire of the Lord. It's the desire of the Lord that you should grow. If you remain in this, I'm born again, I'm born again. How are you sure you're still born again? With the life you are living. If there's no growth in our life, we will not bring joy to the Lord. We will not. There's no way that you will bring joy to the Lord. If you're not growing, dead things don't grow. Dead bodies don't rise up. Dead trees don't grow. So if you don't have this growth, desire to grow, you cannot bring joy to the Lord. Neither bring honor to his holy name. There must be a desire to grow before uh, growth can be possible. Praise the Lord. Paul the Apostle has this concern. Let's open our books to Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 5. Before you go, to, okay, Hebrew chapter 5, verse 12. Hebrew chapter 5, verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracle of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. When you are born again, you say, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. The world bef behind me, the cross before me, is it the same thing today? Now, you cannot even preach this gospel, this gospel anymore. That's why Apostle Paul who said, he was not ashamed to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, believers are ashamed to preach. They only preach when they think nobody was around. You can't preach to the best people living around you. You can't preach to where people know you. So, where are you? Are you growing? Are you growing? Or you need somebody to be teaching you again? Let's open 1 Corinthians 1, 13. 1, to 3. Do I speak with tongues of men, of angels, and have not charity? I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. And do I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge? And do I have faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity? I am nothing. And do I bestow my, all my goods to feed the poor? And do I give my body to burn? I have no charity. It profited me nothing. You see, if you want to grow, there must be love in your heart. You must be a loving person. You must love the Lord. Love the people of the Lord. Love the things of God. Apostle Paul was so concerned about the spiritual state of the Hebrew and Corinthians churches. Christians, he was worried that they are spiritually stagnant. You see, there are 
stagnant, not making any spiritual progress. He labored much in the Lord for them. He was very disappointed with their slow spiritual progress. Is you know what we are seeing today in the life of people? They are not, they are very slow. You're always pushing them, pushing everybody. Can you please come? Can you come? Why should we be begging somebody to do the work of his father? Before, before he, he was born again, he said, I'm born again. I love the Lord. Now I have to be pushing them to do the work of God. So most, for many Christians today, it is the same story of stagnant spiritual state. They don't grow. How can they grow? They will not grow because they don't want to grow. They don't want to have the desire to grow. Acts 19. Acts 19. Verse 2. And it came to pass, let me start from one. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and found certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? If I ask some of us here, since you say you are born again, have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Have you? It's only a few of us. You'll be going to convention, retreat, everything. Have you been baptized by the Holy Ghost? If you are not, you are not growing. Now, convention is coming. What is your goal? What is your expectation? What do you want the Lord to do for you? Just going for vacation? Or just to go see uh, people? Or are you going, are you having expectation? Say, Lord, I will not come back until you bless me. Bless you by the anointing you Baptize you by the Holy Ghost. What is your aim? What is your goal as Christians? If you're not baptized by the Holy Ghost, how can you stand in this time we are living? Spiritual stagnancy is characterized by half-hearted obedience to the Lord. Half-hearted obedience. You'll be pushing to do the work of God. You'll be even to the extent the ministers, the pastor will be begging you to please can you come? Please can you come? As if the as if that you are paying him. Then you watch your life. See where you're standing. When you are not totally giving and concentrated to the work of God. Yesterday it rained. But you know many sisters took the rain. They came for evangelism. They came. Most are giving excuses. We'll be forcing people to do the work of God. But at your various job, at schools, nobody force you what you do. If you fail in a course, you even stay all night studying to pass. So anything coming to spiritual, we relax. We don't care. When you do it, but with a wrong motive, not with a sanctified heart, God will not bless you. We cannot force you to give. We cannot beg you to do anything for the Lord. If you really want to grow in all aspects of your life to serve God, come out, come out and serve him. Amen? Praise the Lord. Matthew 26, 58. Matthew 26, 58. Matthew 26, 58. I read. But Peter followed him afar off. Peter, follow him afar off. Following the Lord afar off, the question is, how are you following the Lord today as you are sitting down here? How are you following the Lord? Peter, followed afar off. He followed him from afar off. He was not zealous and consecrated as he ought to be. Eventually, he denied the Lord. When you live where you're supposed to go, the place you're supposed to be, when you, suppo- when you leave the company of the children of God, you are following the Lord afar off. Eventually, something will happen. Sin will come in, and you will sin. Because you distance yourself from the children of God. Where are you supposed to be? You don't be there no more. Peter followed. That is why he denied the Lord. That is the condition of stagnant people. When we remain stagnant, we do not move forward. We do not make progress. They may go to church. But they have no ministry. As we are sitting down here, you can come to any Monday Bible study, uh, Sunday service, Friday revival hour. You will not have no ministry. 
It's just coming. They go to church. But they did not fulfill the commission. The great commission is not fulfilling their life. There will be no spiritual maturity if the Lord is unable to commit greater things into our hands. We're going to see this message this morning in three points. You must have a desire to grow. Psalm 42. You must have a desire to grow. Psalm 42. I want everybody to open their Bible when I'm calling these numbers because this message was really prayer and God gave me all these uh, verses we are reading. You have to have a desire to grow. As some here, as the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul tasted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is an intense and unquenchable desire in the heart of children of God. The desire to grow, we have to be so pronounced in the life of a genuine believer that it will be seen in every area of your life. You will be seen, not just one, in every area of your life. Let Christ be seen in you, not in some part, in every area of your life. Let Jesus be seen in you, not some area. It is wrong to, it is wrong to profess to love the Lord and yet have no desire to grow. You stay where you are. Children go to school. Children, Young adults, you are the leaders of tomorrow. You started elementary school. You finished middle school. Most of you in the high school. See the stages of growth. Stages of growth. The same way the Lord requires you to grow in him. We cannot stay the same place year after year. It does not glorify God. Spiritual growth does not come to us, uh, come to the careless ones. You got to desire to grow. Spiritual dead cannot grow. Neither do they have desire to grow. Before growth can be possible in the spiritual, there must be an evidence of life in us. There is evidence of life. Desire to grow, we must have it. We always feel concern when there is no growth. Why? Because most of us are lost of the things of the world. If we are not making it, we feel we are not belong anymore. But in things of God, if we take the things of God the way we take it in things of the world, how we pursue in earthly things, we do good. He will do that in Jesus' name. I so say, God will bless you in Jesus' name. If there is no growth in our lives, we will not bring joy to the Lord. Revelation 3, 1 to 6. Revelation 3, 1 to 6. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis, right? This thing say he that had seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know thy work, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. But watch for and strength the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Three, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee. Spiritual dead cannot grow. What was said of the church of Sardis could be said of some churches today. They may have a name that they are alive. Like I said earlier, they go to church. They profess to be believers. Member of Deeper Life Bible Church. Oh, brother, where you go? I'm a member of Deeper. Oh, sister, I'm a member of Deeper. You can profess to be that, but you don't know. If you're not growing, you're the dead person. The rapture will come. Your name is taken away from the book of life, but you don't know. You think you're still born again. You don't know. They are dead because the foundational Christian experience is lacking in their life. They find it difficult to defend Christ. They are not genuinely born again. They are not genuinely born again because if you remain the same state four years ago, every year you see the same where we saw you ten years ago. You are not growing. And you are not even sure about your salvation. There must be a desire in heart to go. 
Because when you look at Acts chapter 17, verse 11, Berean Christians, Berean Christians, they listened to Paul. They came to church as we came like this. They write things down. They went home. They search whether it is true. And when they find out it was true, they gave their life to Christ. They believe and they're doing them. Most of us, we come to church, we don't even take notes. We don't. And two days, ask what's the topic. Most of us don't know. How can you grow if you don't study the word of God? Like Paul tells us, study to show yourself approved unto your husband. Is that what Paul said? Study to show your proof unto your wife, right? Study to show yourself approved unto who? Unto God, a workman needed not to be. What? A shame, rightly divided the word of truth. If you don't study the word, if you don't read the Bible, it's very difficult. People don't read their scriptures these days. They just, they can send you so many things on the phone. You think they are reading their scripture. They don't read their scripture. They should take a verse, send it here and there. But to watch their life. So you have to study the scripture if you want to grow. Praise the Lord. We are going to go to the main important thing, the hindrance, Tell that way. Things that are happening that hinder us from growing. Hindrance to spiritual growth. Hindrance to spiritual growth. Spiritual growth can be hindered by a number of things. Just as the disease that are hindering growth in men physically. The same is also true in the spiritual. There are some attitudes and behavior that ruin the spiritual life of, of believers. Your growth will be hindered and your work with God will be affected if you permit these elements in your life. I'm going to mention those things. If I'm mentioning these things, why are you sitting down? You find one in your life. You got to check, examine yourself to see whether you are in the Lord. There are a lot of things that are hindering us. Some of them are totally backsliding without knowing it. Most Christians today are backsliding without knowing they are backslided. They don't know. The first thing that hinders a Christian from growing is secret sin. Psalm 92, verse 12. Secret sin. Psalm 92, verse 12. We're going to read together because of our time. Psalm 9, secret sin. Psalm 19, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse down me from secret faults. Cleanse down me from secret faults. You know, most Christians are living in secret sins. What is secret sins? F telephone. Phone is a secret sin. Are you using it in a godly way or ungodly way? When you are with your friends alone, who is not a believer, what is coming out to your mouth? Is it godly things or ungodly things? What is you looking a woman and lusting after? A man and lusting after? After the person in your heart. Secret sins. Because that is why God says in Jeremiah 17, 19, the heart is desperately wicked. Only God knows the heart of man and the heart of woman. Whenever you sin, I might not know, but God knows when you sin. One of the things that hinder growth is secret sin. A believer who indulges in secret sin cannot grow. Nothing is hidden from God. Let's see Songs of Solomon 2, verse 15. Take us the forces, the little forces that spoil the vine, for our vines have tender grapes. There are little things we do that we say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, but it does matter a whole lot. Because if, you, if there's any sin in your life, you will, be, you will miss the rapture. I pray you will not miss the rapture in Jesus' name. I pray you will not miss the rapture in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let me start from 13. Let us hear the conclusion of every whole matter. As a born-again Christian, your desire in life is to fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Whether every secret thing 
whether it be good or whether it be evil. God will bring everything to judgment. One day I was asking my children, I called them one after another. What you did two years ago, do you remember? They said no. I lowered it to a year. What you did last year, do you remember? They said no. I said six months. They said no. Do you know most of, most of us have forgotten what we did last two weeks? Sin. And you come to church, you think it's all right. You have, not, you have never prayed for forgiveness of sin. You have never repented of that sin. You think it's over. You forgot it. God has never forgot. It is against you. It is written against you. Secret sin. Any secret thing we do in life is against us. Christians today are living in secret sins. But they think it is all right. Because nobody has caught them. Nobody has scolded them. They think everything is okay. It is not okay. It will haunt them on the last day, except they repent. Second thing that hinder you from growing is pride. Pride in man or in a woman hinders God from giving you grace to make progress in your spiritual life. James 4, 6. James 4, 6. Pride, 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 who you are. I don't know who you are. I know who Christ is. Let them see Christ in you, not who you are, not what you have. Let them see Christ in you. James 4, 6. I'd rather know Christ than know a man or know a woman. But he give it more grace. Wherefore he said, go resist the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. If you don't have the grace of God, you cannot grow spiritually. There's no way you can grow. Pride may be hidden in the heart, but all the sin eyes of God dictate the secret thought of every heart. Pride in heart. Pride in heart. See people, you're looking down on them. You think they are nothing. It's only you as somebody. Pride. Because you have something. You think others might not have it. Pride in heart. You wear dress, you want everybody looking at you. You wear this today, you wear that today. You buy a car. You, what do you have? I like to see Jesus than to see a pride man, not to see a pride woman. When you see people with pride, stay away from them. But they will misguide you. They will make you to sin. That is why when you look at James, we read 4.10, you must humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Amen? I say when you humble yourself, the Lord will lift you up. Forget about the man that is pride. He will fall. But if you humble yourself, children, anywhere you go in your life, humble yourself. The Lord will lift you up in Jesus' name. Because he said you are going to be the head, not the tail. You'll be above all. You're not going to be underneath. That's the promises of God. Humility in heart. God will exalt you. God will lift you up. But when pride comes, you're a failure. Praise the Lord. We will not fail in Jesus' name. Every spirit of pride, the Lord will remove it from our heart in Jesus' name. Now, number three point that hinders spiritual growth is unhealthy companionship. Unhealthy companionship. Children, youth, adult, listen to this. Unhealthy companionship. What does that mean? First Corinthians 15.33. Youth, everybody open that and read. First Corinthians 15.33. Unhealthy companionship. Companionship will hinder you to growth. 1533 says, I read, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. You are a child of God. You are born again. You go to school. You see this child. He's not born again. She, 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 he wear earring. He, not even she. Even she is not good to wear. He, he plait his head. He paints all this. He have a boyfriend, girlfriend, hanging during the school recess. You see them with your eye. Look away from them. Don't join their team. Stay away from them. If you begin to friend them, you will be like them. They will know you. You might think, hey, I got to deep life. I'm born again. Who told you you're born again? And when you are hanging with sinners, try to make sure you won't hang with them, those boys, those girls. Stand on the word of God. Stand alone. You think you're alone. God is with you. When you do that, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Because when you look at Hosea 7 verse, Hosea, Hosea, seven verse eight. Hosea seven. Ephraim has mixed himself among the people. 
Ephraim is a cake and not ton. You know that means, you know the rock, most Christians can be likened like a cake. You know a cake baking. Half is done, half is not done. That's the type of life Christians are living today. They are used to be born again. But if you examine them, they are no more born again. When you mix yourself with the people of other religion, mix with people who don't know Christ, you'll be down. They can offer you anything. Don't accept it. Do not accept what they offer to you. It's not healthy. It's not godly. They will ruin you. They will pull you down. When they come, tell them thank you because you have decided to follow Jesus. Why turn them back? Tell me what a child, a girl, a boy will offer you. Your parents have not given to you. Nothing. The parents have done so much for you. So when they come, let them see Jesus in you. Amen? You to let them see Jesus in you. Amen? Now, if you are sleeping, you to wake up. All the youth sleeping, wake them up. Because we are in a battlefield. We are in a battlefield. The Lord will fight for you in Jesus' name. Now, the next one that hinders spiritual growth in our lives is worldliness and worldly pursuit. Worldliness and worldly pursuit. First John 2 verse 15 which everybody knows about it. It is not the Bible you know matters. The devil uses the knowledge, head knowledge of the scripture you know to destroy many Christians today. Bible said here, worldliness and worldly pursuit. Do not love the world, neither the things in this world. In this world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know why? Because all that is in this world, lust of the flesh, the devil used it against Eve. Look at the tree. That woman was hungry for that tree for a long time. And the loss of the eyes keeps staring, staring. When you see something, you can't even look away. Many people have bust their bumper cars or looking or bust their head somewhere. I mean, what are you looking? What are you looking for? That's why Job said he made a covenant with his eyes. When you see a woman, a man, look up, don't look down. Distance yourself. Make a covenant with your eyes. Do not love the world. Lust of the eyes has sent so many to hell. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. Because the world is corrupt. I said the world is corrupt. The spiritual Worthiness is something that starts from within. It's within. It's not something that comes in. Worthiness goes beyond what can be seen externally. Someone can put off worldly dress, jewelry, and makeups, yet be a chronic worldly internally. Internally. They won't let us do this. They won't let us do that. You are hungry, secret, going out, joining them, family meetings, dancing, naming ceremony, whatever. You go there as a Christian, you bend down, you shake and shake and shake. Nobody's around there. God sees you. God knows you. We have embraced the worldliness in you because no member of the church was there to see you in that family meeting, family gathering, uh, whatever they call it. You look around, nobody there. They sing this word, something, you bend down uh, as if they want to uh, blow air on you. God sees you. We have to live godly, righteously, anywhere we are. Let the light of God, let it, this light be upon you. Live a transparent life. Defend Jesus. Defend him anywhere you go. Praise the Lord. A man or woman may appear godly or righteous, Externally, why his heart may be filled with the husk of Egypt. Yeah, you know, most of us have jewelries. We come to church, we don't, we don't put it on. Are you studying in Egypt? Who are you deceiving? Most of us have some things we've been, even when we are born again, we never let it go. We are hiding them. Coming to church, you dress like Mary, the mother of Jesus. Who are you deceiving? Do you know those things will be there when the rapture takes place? What will you tell Jesus? I was telling my wife last night, everyone sitting down here, unless by the grace of God you are alive when the rapture takes place, we all, if death come, you will meet, you must go to the pearl gate. Everybody we must go to that gate. I was telling her, imagine you walking to that gate. A book will be open. 
Will you hear, hey, come, my beloved son, or depart, you walk of iniquity. And there is no amount of crying that will save, will change the mind of God because you're a sinner. Now we are alive, it is the right time we have. Unhealthy, next one is unhealthy comparison. Second Corinthians 10 2. Unhealthy comparison. Open your Bible. We will finish this point before we pray. Unhealthy comparison. Second Corinthians 10 verse 2. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measure themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. They are not wise. They are foolish people. We don't see that in this church. Thanks be to God. People are competing out there. I saw uh, something happen a couple of weeks ago. This man go get a big house. Big house. What is the job you have to pay this house? The husband said that this is too much for me. I cannot work and work night, 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 night. Work, work, work. And driving a car on the street seven days a week. The husband wants to maintain that house. I mean, the wife wants to maintain that big house because of pride. Because of what people will say. Do you care what people say about you? If you lose your house, you can get another one. Now, something happened. But a few weeks ago, this same man that was crying had a terrible car accident. Very terrible car accident. And about yesterday or today, they put track on him. Will the woman maintain that house again? That's the problem we have. Pride. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. You got to ask your partner, are we able to carry this? Not to, the time to come to church, walk, 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 to foot the bills. Suppose anything happen. What will you tell the Lord? We have to be careful how we live our life. Unhealthy comparison. Don't do because other people are doing it. You are a member of this great church. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Those Christians who compare their spiritual life with that of other people cannot experience wholesome growth. Like I'm here preaching. You know our resident pastor. You know how God, God is using him mightily to bless us. You cannot, I cannot compare myself to him. Everything is level by level by level by level. If you know how to sing very well, good voice. Don't say sister, I don't have a good voice. He, she can't start a song. Who told you? Give sister a chance like the resident pastor. Watch him a couple of weeks now. He has not been preaching. He's given us the chance to preach. That's to tell a man of God. He wants us to, everybody to grow. Don't say it's me, 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 me. Everything is you. You have to dominate. That's pride in you. Pride in you. You might serve him, but your service are not noted in heaven. Praise the Lord. Many people are unable to grow spiritually because of self-satisfaction. Self-satisfaction. What do you have to offer me? Oh, really? We have to offer you Jesus. When you went to somebody to preach the gospel, tell them you want to offer them Jesus. Amen? I say amen. amen. Without Jesus, you can't be here today. We have Jesus to offer to the world. I can do this and that. Yes, they can, but they don't have Jesus. They don't have Jesus. It is only when you compare yourself with the Lord that you will experience growth. Oh, we want to be like Jesus. Oh, I want to be like Jesus. But there is no single trace or characteristics of Christ in your life. Today, rising and falling. Rising and falling. Since 10 years, you started deeper life. Every day, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. No sanctification. No holy baptized in the Holy Ghost. Every day you pray, forgive, 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 forgive. You are a baby in the Lord. Tell me when you cannot say, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord. You are a baby in the Lord. You should be growing. When you finish uh, grade one, you went to grade two, you go to grade three, you don't come back again to do something for grade one. They won't give you the assignment of grade one anymore. Many people just stagnant. A lot of stagnation in the life of Christians today. We still remain where we are. No growth. Every day, Lord, forgive me. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Because you're not born again. When you're born again, when you're sanctified and baptized, you can't look down. You can't look back to Egypt again. Many Christians are looking back to Egypt every day. 
Every day they're looking back to Egypt. Every day. Why don't they remain there? They should have remained there. The time you have to study the word is the time you have to talk, talk, talk. If your life is every day, some people every day, they must talk about somebody. When you hear that phone ringing, ignore that phone call. Oh, did you see what he talked today? Did you see this, this brother today? Did you see this sister today? They do that in social church. Social church. When you have friends that always reading family news, whatever you call it out there, be careful. Have a team to pray. Pray, pray, pray together. Pray with that season. Watch your life. What things you do. And pray. Not to talk, talk. Now, lastly, talkativeness. Talkativeness. We will pray shortly. Talkativeness. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2. Talkativeness. Be not rash with the word. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy word be few. Do you know what happened today? Most Christians have loose talking, loose mouth. They can talk anyhow. Loose talking also retards spiritual growth. Watch what you say. You see, knowledge is saying things, having the knowledge to say things. But the wisdom is what you want to say, how you can bring it to where it won't hurt anybody. You know what to say. You just shut your mouth up. Don't just have a loose mouth. You can talk anyhow. You, you are not growing. It will affect your spiritual life. Can you recall how many hours you have wasted in idle talks, whispering, 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 seeing somebody coming, you smile. Behind him, you pick up phone. Who does she think she is? Who did he think he is? We should be careful what we say. Every idle tongue, 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 we say, we will give account of it before Christ. Watch what you talk, watch what you say. It's good to stand alone. You might think you'll be alone. You are with Christ. One with God is the majority. Avoid those foolish friends. They always find something to say. They always talk about somebody. They carry people's burden on their head. But to watch their life, they are not living right. They will give account. It's a matter of time. Every, everything you do is written in the books. But I pray your name will be in the book of life. Amen? I say I pray your name will be written in the book of life. Amen? Past occultic involvement not broken. It used to be, you know, uh, I, I won't say here or back home. If you involve yourself in occultic things, you must renounce and break yourself off from it. Destroy everything you got from them. Don't keep even one. If you keep one from them, you're still retaining them. They will haunt you. They will come back. Laziness will, not, will make you not to grow. People, Christians are lazy in everything these days. Very lazy. Lazy to pray. Lazy to read, study the word of God. Lazy even to come to church on time. And these children, which children? God gave you these children. And this work, which work? God gave you this work. You never go to work late. Everything excuses when it comes to the things of God. You cannot grow. How can we grow? Except we change our mind and pray for the grace. Prayerlessness. Prayerlessness in the life of people cannot make them grow. How many times you pray every day? I have somebody in my house back home in Africa. I was telling my wife this morning. He's a Muslim. I don't bother much about religion. I bother people who give their life to Christ, living right. Try to work on him. And uh, this man, do you know, in my own house, a minister, fellow ministers all over finding me come, sometimes they will pack aside because this guy was praying. When they bend down to praying, that's it. We have to wait him. 
After he finished like three, five minutes praying, he will come and open the gate for us. This has been bothering me, bothering me. I said, me? When I went to my state pastor, all the Christians were guiding his house. All Christians. I said, wow, how I wish I would get this. And we're praying, looking, see if we can get one. But glory be to God. I got a call yesterday. They get a man. He's a Christian from the same northern state. He's coming. Decision came. It, I didn't make that decision by myself, to be honest to you. I called the fathers in the Lord. Well, I called our resident pastor. I called fathers in the Lord. I asked my wife too to make a decision. Is it not right for me? To, hey, he's a Christian. Take him. He's a Christian. Uh, you have to be careful decisions you make in life. Pray over it. Pray over it. Now, today, I'm having a Christian. But what happened this morning? When I made a call, they said that he told them he has not been to church all the way coming from the north for a week now or two, that he must go to church first before coming back. I said, that's the type of person I'm looking for. He doesn't even care about to work from the northern state. He wants to go to church first. Now you, me, if somebody calls us today, you're going to force a job, come to orientation on, on Sunday. Will you say no? You are a Christian? God will judge. Christians, anything we do, God will judge us. Be careful so you not lose your name in the book of life. Five more minutes to go. Steps to spiritual growth. If you want to grow, if you want to grow, I will run us only with five minutes, the steps to grow. If you want to grow in life, grow spiritually, we need to make progress. The Lord is saying, Deuteronomy 1, Deut everybody open the book, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 1, I'm reading 6 to 8. Six, and this was which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Because of time, we will be a little bit fast uh, from what we are reading. And thou shalt teach them this day unto their children. Teach the word to your child. And shall talk of them when seated in thy house. Teach your children the word of God. That are steps to go. The more you are teaching them, you are teaching yourself. Anytime you are, any single time you have with your children, read the scripture with them. Teach them the word of God. They have it. You might think they are not getting it. It is not true. They had it. They are so smart. They will not forget. Our children will not forget in Jesus' name. You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn you and take your journey. We have stayed too long where we are. If you have been in a particular situation for too long, it is time to move on to spiritual progress and maturity. Without progress, we will be disappointed terribly in eternity. We pray that we will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. We will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Spiritual growth demands a change. If you grow spiritually, your life will change. Things will change. The Lord will fight for you. You just sit back and watch. You know, one thing about life is don't be too fast say you want it. Let God, God will give it to you. Who is Pharaoh that will hinder the children of Israel from living? When he pleased God, he will get it for you. If it if it's to remove that man, that woman, that particular person, for you to serve him, the Lord will do it. You have to study the word. You have to be honest with the word. You have to serve him. The Lord will fight for us in Jesus' name. We need to have quality, qualitative growth in our lives. There is need to lay aside things hindering us from spiritual growth. Things making us to deteriorate rather than progress. When we make progress, it will be evident to us and to everyone who used to know us before that we are making progress. If you are changing, if your life change, we will know. Everybody will know. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine. 
So when they see you, they will glorify the God of heaven. And if you are a born again Christian, your life cannot be hidden. People will know you. You cannot be a troublemaker, dear. People will know you. Praise the Lord. If we are going to make progress, there must be some steps in the process of growth. What are the steps to grow maturity? Point one, we have only six steps to go. Step one, there should be tasty and desire for real spiritual growth. Tasty and desire for real spiritual growth and greater spiritual height. Greater spiritual height. We must be dissatisfied with our present state where we are right now. Are you happy? Are you happy? Just come to church and go. Come to church and go. Go and sleep. Wake up. Go to work. Go to school. We must be what? Desire to have it. You read that in Psalm 42, 1 and 2. Secondly, number two, proper feeding on the word of God. Second Timothy 2.15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman. A workman. You're a workman of God. Needed not to be ashamed. Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed to preach the gospel. Today we are ashamed. We are ashamed to declare that word because of people in other religion is with us. Shame unto anybody who don't preach the gospel. Anywhere you go. Praise the Lord. Proper fee. If you want to grow, you must study the word of God. Point number three. If you want to grow, you must pray. You must pray. I like our mothers. They never fail. They pray without ceasing. And I hope they are remembering, remembering me in their prayers too. Remembering the church in our prayers too. The confession is coming now. This is the time to pray. This is the time to ask God, what do you want God to do for you? Prepare yourself to receive. Prepare your heart. Prepare your mind. Prepare yourself. Say, Lord, I'm going to Kingston. Not just going there. I'm coming to be a new person. A new person. You got to pray. Pray without ceasing. Don't pray and sleep. Pray, pray, pray. We have mothers in this church. They are doing it. I've observed them for a long time. I thank God for them. We pray their labor shall not be in vain in Jesus' name. Pray constant, fervent prayer, not for mundane things. You see, when you pray, God, give me, give me, give me, you're not going to get it. That's why it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not God, you think God, God knows what you need. But why don't we just obey him to pray for him? When you pray, you will receive in Jesus' name. Pray for spiritual things, not the mundane things of the world. For you said prayer, you will see that prayer, Matthew 26, 41. Number four point to, to grow. Consecration unto the Lord. We must lay everything on the altar and tell the Lord to do with us as it pleases him. You cannot please yourself. You cannot give condition for yourself. Let the Lord Take condition of you. Let the Lord just mold you. Fit you for his kingdom. Make you look how he wants you to be. Not you. This one, yeah. This one, yes. This one, no. Oh, you are not. You can't grow. You can't grow. You got to completely surrender your life to Christ. Let him use you. When the Lord uses you, be a different person in Jesus' name. The world will know you. I said the world will know you. Amen? Amen? The fifth one, change of spiritual diet. You see, you cannot keep dwelling with old friends. The same church member that you cannot achieve any great thing from them. They become your friend day after day, night after night, month after month. Maybe you're the same tribe. Maybe the same country. Maybe the, wherever you came from. Apostles didn't do that. If you know you have a friend, you are not getting anything from that individual. Why keep in that company? You change. Change your spiritual diet. Find somebody who will meet you. Join prayer groups. Read their scripture. Study alone. Pray yourself. Leave that individual. They will call you on the phone. They will call. I'm not going to say they will not call you. 
Don't pick up their phone. Stop testing. Testing alone can distract you. The time you want to study, you are testing, 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 testing. Devil, you think devil is, 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 don't know what he's doing? Devil knew what he's doing. If you know he can gut you with testing, distract you from praying, he will do that. Your best friend, somebody you call your best friend, test something to you. Immediately, you forget what you are doing. And replying, she will be testing, he will testing. Before you know it, that time has gone. Or calling on the phone. When you need them to pray for something important in your life, any phone call that rings, ignore that phone call. That phone call is not normal. Because the devil don't want you to get what you want. It's not when you need them to pray. Phone ring. You go pick up phone and talk. No, you have blew it up. You don't give God respect anymore. Ignore anything. Phone calls. If you want to be serious, grow. Try to ignore minor things that you think doesn't count, but does count. They does count. They will deny you the power and the grace and the gift and the blessing of God in your life. You can see that in Hebrew 5, 12, and 13. You got to change. Finally, finally, separation from things that hinder spiritual growth. Separate yourself from things that hinder spiritual growth. You can see that in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12. We are for brethren. We are for my brethren. Let him that thinketh, he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Praise the Lord. If I have a friend who is a minister living in sin, why should I keep the company of him? If I know he's doing something wrong, why can't I tell him this is ungodly? Why should, you, why should I conform and support and play nonchalant attitude? That's what is making the love of many today was in code. You know your brother is doing something wrong. He won't say nothing because we are body body. Body body in will lead you to hell. Separate yourself. Come out from among them. Be you separate. On the sixth, now, the same 10 Corinthians 12, 10 verse 12. I'm going to number six. Now, these things we are our example. To the intent we should not lost after evil things as they also losted. We should not lost after evil things in our life. We should not. It's time to pray. I want everybody to rise up. Rise up. You'll be, sit, you'll be sitting down for a long time. We have dwelt long enough in this place. Turn you and take your journey. Commit to yourself. Are you growing or not growing? If Christ standing here now, will he give you a pass mark since you started coming to church? What is that that is lacking in your life? What is that that you want that you don't have? If you don't ask, you can't receive it. Spiritual growth. Many people are dead walking, living, without knowing they are dead spiritually. You can come up to the pulpit and preach or you can preach. You can dress like an angel in heaven. But inside you, we will see Jesus in you. Will Christ be seen in you? Commit to yourself. Say, Lord, no matter what, I need you in my life. He's the one that is going to fight for us. He's the one that is going to change us. Nobody can help you to grow. You and your God will help you to grow. If you don't desire it, you stay where you are. Remember, if you don't grow, you think I'm born again. You are not born again. You are born again three years ago. You stay the same level. The same thing. The same thing. Watch and examine your life. To see whether you are still in the Lord. In the Lord. Try to take off those 
besetting things, those things that are hindering us from growing, take them off. Commit to yourself into the Lord. He will do it for you. He said, when you call upon me, I will answer you. Convention, convention is coming. You will struggle. You pay all these bills. You risk your life. You, draw, you will drive to Kingston. You stay in hotel for three days. What are you longing for? What are you looking for? What do you want the Lord to do for you? What do you want the Lord to do for you? Jacob said, I will not leave you go until you bless me. Are you just going year after year like that? Going to Kingston is good. But what are you getting there when you go at this time? Spread that this is your year. This is your appointed year. This is your appointed year. Lord, I'm not coming back the same. Lord, I'm not coming back the same. This is your appointed year. I'm not coming back the same. Until you bless me. Until you bless me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. It's like the message should just continue. Because it's ministration to our souls. We've had God speak to us today through his servant. Very direct. From the scriptures to the soul. We comprehend. We understand all that has been said to us today. The Father, we want to mix it with faith. And we're praying that this will produce results in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, O oh God, that anyone who is falling, backsliding, especially in the heart, not manifest, but you know the true condition of everyone. And that person is asking you for help. That person is asking for mercy. That person is asking with humility, Divine Father, for you came to seek and save the lost. For you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in the world that you've given, in the sacrifice of your Son, will not have to perish. Father, we pray on the basis of everything that you've done. Deliver such an individual in the name of Jesus Christ. Is anyone here halting between two opinions? The world is ever near, and even nearer than your presence to that person. Lord God, we pray by your divine power, you will separate such a one from the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Especially those who hear the voice, the sound of our voice. Pray those that have heard this message here today. We're not even thinking about people who are outside there. We're talking about people, deeper life, Bible church members, oh God, that have made effort to leave various things to be here today. We pray that none of this effort and sacrifices will go down the drain in the name of Jesus Christ. Purge your church, oh God. Cleanse your church from secret sin within and destroy the every evidence of sin without in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Even if there's anyone here that's become dull of hearing, Lord God, we pray because dullness of hearing comes from the heart. The heart is defiant to God's your word. We're praying that every fallow ground, every fallow heart, every indifferent heart here today, we pray be broken up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And David said, where with that shall a young man cleanse his way? Can it be applied to a young woman? Cleanse her way. Lord God, it's only by taking heed to thy word. Lord, we're praying that everyone here, you will take us to the next level. We pray everyone here. Just as David said, my heart pants after the water brook. Lord, even as the deer pants, actually, my heart pants after you, even as the deer pants after the water brook. And Lord, there's that person here, thirsty, hungry. And you said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, not after material things, but after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
as long as we've tasted after material things, we haven't been filled. We've never made any progress. But Lord, we're making up our mind from today to try something new, to thirst after righteousness, to thirst for more of your presence, to thirst for more of your glory. Especially in this end time, Lord, you're looking for who to pour out your spirit onto. Who to pour out, oh God, your power on. To use, oh God, a broken vessel to use. Father, we're asking you, Lord, send us. Lord, we're available. Lord, use us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't seem, Lord, convenient to serve you today. But we pray for grace. We pray for strength. Even with the distraction in the world. Separate us, Father, from the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And you're praying for us, oh God. We pray that your prayer, oh God, your intercession for the church will not go down the drain in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Peter, I've prayed for you. After you're converted, strengthen your brethren. Lord God, as many of God, like we've been told today, to strengthen the thing that is still in place. For the fact that you're here today, and I'm speaking now directly to somebody here. For the fact that you're here today, that means there's still some structure in place. It means everything has not gone down entirely. That which is in place, we pray, be strengthened here today in the name of Jesus. And we pray as you move out from here, you will begin to rise with strength. You begin to rise with power in the Lord. You will not be the same again. The Lord will have mercy on you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And for our pastor, Lord God, that you've used, we pray more anointing upon his life. More strength upon his life, oh God. Thank you, everlasting Father. And he will not miss it, oh God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen.